Welcome to another episode of Grow on YouTube. I am your host, Claire Sara, and today we're talking about running a business and growing a YouTube channel. So my guest today is Rad Bormeister. He is the co-founder of the business and YouTube channel Unity Gym. Rad is obsessed with movement. He teaches people how to get strong and flexible and has a passion for business development. He's built a successful business as well as building the Unity Gym YouTube channel to over 50,000 subscribers and getting millions of views on his very niche content on YouTube. So we're going to be hearing about the ups and downs of entrepreneurship and how Rad's been using YouTube to grow his business. So on this channel, we are growing on YouTube by learning from YouTubers who are doing awesome things and we're making sure we're putting some of those wonderful things that we're learning into practice. So Make sure you let me know in the comments if there's something that you've started to implement on your channel that you've learnt about here. And without further ado, a very warm welcome to today's guest, Rad. Thank you so much for being here, Rad. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's so awesome to have you here. It was so, so exciting to see your your channel cross over that 50,000 mark in the, the VRA group and, you know... That was that was when I first heard about your your awesome channel and always great to connect with a, a fellow Australian. That's yeah, there's been a lot it. of a lot of uh, people from all over the world coming and joining on this channel. And yes, yeah, so cool to be in similar time zones. Yeah, it's that's, a funny thing. This whole YouTube thing when we when we started, we never really thought about the idea that it was you know a global audience. And then when we started looking at our analytics and by a country mile, the uh, the biggest chunk of our audience is in uh, the USA. So it's a, it's a funny thing to, you know, be sitting yeah. down here in Australia and having people from all over the world, um, you know, tuning into what you do. So pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty pretty amazing way to connect people with people. I know that we have some people from the UK here, Poppy and Neville. Thank you so much for being here, and my beautiful mum is watching from Strathalbyn in South Australia. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Um, yes, my when I look at my analytics, mine is very similar, like a lot of people tuning in from the US, um, which mm -hmm. I was quite, I was surprised by. Um, but that's why we're like doing this at 8 a.m. slash 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Australia yeah. so that we can connect with folks who are over in the States as well. Sorry about that, Poppy and Neville. I know it's very, very late for you where you are. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, we get up real early to be able to speak to people in the UK when it's like 11 p.m. or something. <laughs> I'm used to it. Yeah, yeah, yes. I know when we were arranging this, you said that you uh, awake <laughs> at like 4:30 a.m. Rad. What's that all about? Um, well, I've I've always been a morning person, um, and I served in the military for four years as an infantry soldier, and you, um, you know, the, your timings are very strict and in the morning and um and then i ran a gym for i've been a personal trainer besides a four-year stint in the army for 17 years uh and when you're a personal trainer in australia at least i don't know what it's like everywhere else in the world the majority of your money is made between 6 a.m and 8 30 a.m um without a doubt that's the busiest time and so mm. you have to work at those times which means you're getting up at five or whenever it is um and when we sold the gym and moved 100 percent online i um i didn't want to break my habits and so i have my alarm set every day for five but i usually wake up before it i very rarely wake up from my alarm i'm usually awake before it goes off so yeah i get up and i do my training first in the morning and then i come and sit down at my desk at 8 30 and start my work day so that's yeah how it goes that's awesome do you um do you make it to any of those VRA things that are in the middle of the night? To be honest, I haven't yet. Um, we've been a member of VRA for uh, I think about three or four years, but my brother and business partner and co-founder of the gym, uh, Yanni, uh, Jim, the business, um, we started this all together. And when we started this YouTube journey, I think. I think we started our channel in 2014 um, when I look back at our first video, but we started with VRA in 2018 or 2019. I can't remember. It was all him. Um, I had like, I would film the videos with him, but he did all the uploading and the ranking and the editing and the thumbnails and everything. 
and he but we sort of stopped doing it all for a couple of years and then i've just taken it over again maybe three or four months ago so i'm really sort of fresh to vra and to the community so i haven't joined any of their um lives yet i'm still working out when they are and how i do them yeah they're they're at 2 30 a.m for me <laughs> right <laughs> which okay is, which is a real hoop, <laughs> but you know it's it is good fun um for anyone who's watching who doesn't know what vra is it's uh a uh, YouTube course um, <laughs> to kind of help streamline Video ranking the academy. learning. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. So what was your, your motivation, yours and Yanni's motivation to start your YouTube channel? Um, so I started as a personal trainer in, I think I've, we finished our certificate four course in 2005 um, started working January, 2006, I think that's when it was. Um, and I'm 44 now. So when I, and I joined the army, uh, two years after that. So when in 2008, when I was 30 and I got out when I was 34, so I'm in that sort of age bracket where social media was not something that came naturally to me. And, um, I don't know how old you are, Claire, but do you remember MySpace? I am old enough to remember MySpace. Let us know in the comments if you're old enough to remember MySpace. <laughs> I never had a MySpace account. I rejected it. And I've been yeah. I've been a little bit, I don't know what what's the word, um, obnoxious maybe when it came to social media and technology and things like that. I was like, oh, that's so stupid. Why would you do that? I never had a MySpace account. I got onto Facebook years after it started. And I actually only got onto Facebook because I was in the army and I was posted to Townsville and all my family's down in Sydney and I was really lonely. So I thought I'll stuff it. I'll get on Facebook. And, uh, and then the same thing with YouTube and Instagram, everything, we were late adopters to it all. We didn't, we never got onto it early and, um, we've been a part and I keep saying we, I'm always referring to my brother and I, um, we've been a part of many, um, high level coaching groups like masterminds that cost between, Fifteen thousand and fifty thousand dollars a year, and one wow. of the big ones that um, Yanni was a part of was called K Two Mastermind with Kerwin Ray. And a part of that in one of the years that he was there is that they did their mega or their master training or whatever you, whatever they called it, whatever the event was in Vegas for five days. And a part of that, one of the guest speakers was Gary Vaynerchuk, and that was oh, wow. I don't know when that was, uh, maybe 2016 or something like that. Yeah, it would have been about 2016. And Yanni just came back so fired up because um, that was, at least for me, I'd never heard of Gary Vaynerchuk before. And, you know, Yanni got a picture with him and he, just, he came back and we read Crush It and we just like went from literally just doing nothing on social media to making a conscious decision that we were just going to go all in on it. And we went all in on it and we just accepted that we would suck at it for ages. Um, and we just got com completely sort of focused on the process rather than, you know, the outcome. And, um, you know, we just played around with so many different things. Like we tried Snapchat when it came out and um, it just, we got to a point where we realized that it was really, really challenging to excel at so many different platforms. So we focused on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, and now we also um, are including TikTok and Twitter in that, um, like I've found a way to be able to bring that all together. And um, yeah, we, uh, we, we went, we'd already started our YouTube channel, but back then we had, I think we had like 2000 followers or something. And, and that was like, you know, we were just putting stuff up and we got some followers, you know, we had no real strategy to it. Um, but that's when we really started to strategize. Um, and we said, yeah, we're really going to try to do this. And we had plans and they were terrible plans. They didn't work well, but <laughs> we had them and we followed them. And, um, and then, yeah, Yanni got uh, access to VRA back in 2018 or 2019. And that's when it all really sort of started to grow. And we, we went from like, um, 10,000 followers to 40,000 when I look at our data in like one year, like we had massive, wow. there was a period where we were growing about 3,000 or three, roughly three to 4,000 new followers a week. There was a period there. Um, wow. So, yeah. That's amazing. And then, and at, um, yeah. At that time, what was your, 
like what were you doing on your channel at that time when you were seeing all of that growth? Was it like just it, it's fu it's funny. I look back at I was trying to work out what it was that created that growth back then and I spoke to my brother about it. Um and the majority of that growth happened in 2020. So when the world went into lockdown for COVID. Right. Um so I think we went from 17,000 uh, at the start of 2020 to about 40,000 or 42 or something by September or October 2020. Um, and there was a couple of things. So my brother was really implementing VRA, which meant that we were ranking videos. Um, you know, we were doing better thumbnails. We were, you know, following all the guidance of um, Sean and the team. Um, but also what we did when, when the world went into lockdown in, or at least in Australia, I think it was March, 2020. So we owned our gym in North Sydney and we had unity gym online, which was just a side project. It was a side hustle. And immediately we couldn't have members in the gym. And we just decided that we were going to completely shift to doing, um, online workouts, like live streamed workouts. And that's pretty much what every personal trainer or fitness professional attempted to do around the world. Fortunately mm. for us, we had a studio set up, we had equipment, we had digital cameras, we had lighting. Um, Yanni and my father is a professional, blah, professional photographer as well. So we had a bit of an insight into how to do it all. And we just started doing daily, um, workouts, uh, live streamed at 7 30 AM Australia. So it was good for America and um, mm. the UK and people started tuning in from all over the world. And, uh, that was what we can put it down to is that we were doing daily live streamed workouts and we also were implementing all this VRA stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. I like, it's, it's just incredible how like such good things can come out of necessity. Like mm -hmm. it, it, it's really it's really incredible seeing the way people have kind of pivoted what they're doing during this whole process. And, and for some, some people it's been a real positive, like obviously that has come at the cost of lots of, lots of struggles for a lot of people. But, you know, my, my brother is an artist and he was doing like in-person art class, like art groups. That was one of his streams of income. And that is now in, entirely online and he's reaching a global audience and it's it's incredible like it's mm. um it's amazing what can happen so it's so interesting to me that you and you had not done social media stuff previously because i've watched some of your early videos and you and yanni both seem like you you, you have really excellent kind of camera presence and your ability to communicate with with your audience is really strong, uh, I I would say. And like, I was wondering, where does that come from for for you guys? Like, do you have a performance <laughs> background, or is that just from doing lots of uh, lots of personal training, or what's the what's the story, Rad? Both. Um, my I'm. I've been surrounded throughout my life by um, actors. My sisters are both actors um, and have been quite successful. My sister Saskia um, was, uh, she's, she's given it up now since she became a mother, um, but she turned her back on a very successful acting career. She was in movies with Heath Ledger and um, oh, she's, she's been in like 20 movies or something like that. Um, and she was on, um, big Australian TV shows. Um, and so I've been around that. Uh, and I also, when I was younger, um, much younger. Um, so when I got out of high school, I was, um, uh, well, I was for over a decade fanatical about Kung Fu. Uh, and that's what led me into the fitness industry. That's a whole nother story though. Um, but I, one of the, f one of my first aspirations was to be a stunt man on films. Um, because I just loved martial arts and I wanted to do um, kung fu movies and you have to get a stunt license. And that led me to auditioning for a job at Fox Studios uh, when it first opened. So that was 1999. 
and like 10,000 people auditioned and I, I got the job. There was 120 positions available for performers and I was one of the successful applicants. Um, and so I got trained on street theater and all this stuff that I'd never done before. Um, so that's clearly had yeah, some yeah. kind of an impact to it. Awesome. Uh, but then also being a coach for um, 17 years, I, you talk to people and you get used to sort of being on the stage. And um, I guess I've got m a mother and father that have also been like, even to this day, we just had a family holiday. My mum still will say, like, if I say Yanni and me are going to go down, she'll pull me up and go, Yanni and I. <laughs> and so, like, I've got this mum that's just always on me for correct communication. And we, and we also just never, we all, we reviewed what we did. And like, I would say to my brother, Yanni, man, you got to talk more like this. Like when you talk like that, it, like Yanni's got this way of talking where he's like almost aggressive. Like he's just, he just delivers it in this really weird way where he, you know, he's better now, but anyway, yeah. So we just gave each other <laughs> feedback and. Yeah. 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 What is it like working so closely with your brother? Have you always gotten along well or not? It's funny. It's a funny thing. Um, we were both advised by business people never to get into business with family um, for many reasons. And there's lots of horror stories out there that like where business has really divided people. And when money comes between siblings or between family, it can be a, a really touchy thing. For Yanni and I, um, it's been very successful for us. We complement each other very well. Um, in Yanni's, uh, Yanni's description of me is that I'm a, a point, shoot, aim person. Um, and I would agree with that. I just like, if I see something that needs to be done, I just jump straight up and do it. Whereas Yanni is the kind of person where he will, he will plan and plan and plan and something that he's been talking about is we're going to have it in two weeks or three months later, and we're still working on it. And that, complements each other and it balances it out because he'll pull the reins on me sometimes and I'll just clear his head of the clutter and say, you know, this is what you need to focus on doing. And it's worked really well with him. Um, yeah. That's excellent. How lovely. That's so good. I was <laughs> like, uh, yeah, when I was reading about, about your business and saw that you were brother, brothers, I was like, oh my gosh, that I imagine could be very full on at times, but amazing that you've been doing it for many years now and it's it's working great that's awesome i'd love to work with decades now. he lives in germany though so it's hard for us um mm -hmm. so i was wondering what came first so so you moved your your business online or added did you already have like your your website and the online options or did that totally come out of like the lockdown. So we made it, we made all the all the best mistakes that you could ever make in business. We made them. We made every like fatal mistake um, under the sun. And the big ones that I know now, like if I could go back ten years, it would have just been focus, focus on one thing and make that one thing work. But mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we and there's just so many, there's so much backstory to all of that, but we opened the gym in 2013, um, Unity Gym in North Sydney, in the middle of North Sydney. And we opened in the middle of North Sydney because if you didn't know about COVID and you had no idea that that was going to happen, then that was a good spot to open because there's like North Sydney is the third biggest central business district in Australia. There's Sydney, mm. Melbourne, North Sydney. Um, so, <clears throat> so we opened there and we like once we'd been doing the YouTube channel for a little while and I think we got to like 10,000 subscribers. I don't know what we were at, but we, I just said to, Oh, that's right. I remember now. Um, Yanni read a book on finance. Yanni, Yanni is the CEO of our company and he's the CFO and he's made it a mission to learn about, you know, finances and money and all this stuff. And awesome. um, he came in one day and he said to me, we need a second revenue stream. And I said, what, what do we need a second revenue stream for? And we both had kids, very young kids at the time. And he said, what if something happened to Unity Gym? And I said, what would happen to Unity Gym? And he said, I don't know. But what if it did? What would, what would wow. we do? And I, I'll never forget it. I was, it was like I saw a ghost. I, I'll never, I remember that moment. I just had this sinking feeling in my gut. I, just this, I've never thought of it before. 
And he said, we need a second revenue stream. We need something that would, you know. And so I said, well, why don't we try doing online coaching? Let's do something like that. And he said, what would we do? And I said, well, we've got like 10,000 followers on YouTube. Like there's people in the world that obviously care about what we do. So let's Mm. do programs. And it was really funny because he said to me, what should we do? Do you think we should do like fat loss programs or, or like muscle building programs? Or, and I said, man, there's so many fat loss experts out there. And, and if you put you in, we're not bodybuilders. So if we take our shirts off and stand next to a bodybuilder, like we, we will look great next to the average person with our shirts off, but not next <laughs> to a bodybuilder. No one's going to buy programs off us for that. Um, and I said, let's do flexibility programs. It's something that I, I, I've got a feeling that this is a trend in the, in the, uh, you know, in the fitness space, you know, people are wanting to learn more about flexibility and it's something that I'm really passionate about. And so we did that. And it was the first time in history that we had any success with online advertising. And what I mean by that is we did a lot of advertising on Facebook for gym memberships, like, you know, seasonally, like it's, it's the new year coming, you join a gym membership and nothing worked. Like, I mean, what I mean is nothing worked. We never got to that point where if we put a thousand dollars into a marketing campaign, we'd get five thousand dollars back in gym memberships. It just never happened. Mm. And this is the first time it happened. We all of a sudden, uh, for every thousand dollars we spent, we were making one thousand one hundred dollars back. Um, so it wasn't a That's lot, awesome. but it was enough. It was enough that we said, okay, it let's start spending ten thousand dollars a week. And you know, at the start of it, we did. We got up to spending like ten thousand dollars a week on marketing. Um, and we were making back 11,000 or 12,000 or whatever it was, but our list just grew exponentially. We went from 2000 emails, um, in our database to like 130,000 in a year. Wow. And when I, when I tell people wow. that growth, people, people just drop their jaw. They're just like, oh my God. Um, yeah. and that's what we accepted we were doing. We weren't making a lot of profit, but we just had exponential growth. Um, and so that's how it started. Uh, and back then our website was split. Like there was a tab for gym memberships and there was a tab for online. It was just, it was all wrong, but we had this growth, you know, and that's what, that's what fueled where we are. Well, that was the start of it. You know, that was the, the, the base of the fire, I guess that burned. And you, you now have this very, very fancy looking website. Is this, did you... Did you guys build this yourselves? That's another great story. Um, so I, uh, back when we started our, that when Yanni said to me, we need another revenue stream, we need to make money. And he was, he was tapped out. He was, he had so much going on and he couldn't um, take any more on. And I said, all right, I'm going to do this. And I went from knowing absolutely nothing about digital marketing, nothing at all. Um, we signed up to a program called The Council by a guy named Nick Kuzmich, who is accredited as having the highest uh, return on ad spend recorded on Facebook. So Sean Cannell is wow. the YouTube guy. Nick Kuzmich is the Facebook guy. And so I went to him and I did this course and well, um, I enrolled in his program and it was 400 US dollars a month or something. And I learned and I just invested so much time in learning how to do Facebook ads and how, how you set up ad campaigns and everything and how you build funnels. And a part of that was that there's a monthly AMA, ask me anything for tech implementation. So anything to do with the back end of how you build funnels. Um, and this guy that took those calls is a guy named Chris Murray, who's in Geelong. And um, he runs a company called Lead Republic. Um, and so he was giving me advice on how to well, I was getting advice from him on how to build funnels, but we, we ended up getting to a point where I said to Yanni, I said, look, you know, if we're going to go to that next level with this, like I'm a complete amateur that's built our funnel in click funnels. Chris is a pro. Let's pay him to rebuild the funnel for us. And we paid him and he did a wonderful job. And I, it, what he gave us for what we invested was so much more than what I expected. Like I kind of expected that there'd be a project that you paid for and you'd manage it and then it was ended and that was it. But he, he just kept helping us. Like every time I'd ask him, hey, Chris, how do I do this? He'd get back to me an hour later and say, it's all good, man. I've gone in and done it for you. He, he just kept helping us. Wow. And eventually, Yanni and me said, um, if we're going to have an online business, having somebody that can do what Chris does, not as a freelance worker for us, but an invested interest in the business is what we need to grow. And we offered him uh, a, a sizable profit share in our business for what he did. And no one would ever get that. We've had people try to throw 
tens of thousands of dollars at us to invest in our business and uh, have a profit share. And we've refused them because of the value of what it is now. But yeah, so yeah. our website is completely built and managed by Chris, who's uh, our third business partner. That's amazing. Could I invest in in Unity Gym? It's sounding quite good. No, we're not. Um, we're not uh, looking I'll, for investors I'll invest in right now. Else. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Just kidding. I can't build a website like this. This is amazing. Um, yeah. So yeah. So Chris built that for us, and the, besides many other things, the the main thing about that website is that there is only one thing that you can buy on it. Um, which mm. is, uh, has been a massive part of what we've done. The, we, we learned the hard way that the more you've got, the more confusion you have and um, you just yes. need to make things simple. Yes. When I was looking through your your website, um, I was I was blown away by that. You have So you've got all of these guides, which are such interesting offerings. And I think this is what you're speaking to earlier about like everyone's doing it's the new year. Let's all learn how to lose mm -hmm. weight. But like actually addressing things that people have serious, like a serious issues for people, particularly people who are like, if you're, you're originally based in like the CBD, right? The, the yep. central business district. And like all of these things are problems of people who sit at desks all day. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I would say, yep. and it's such an Absolutely. interesting thing. And these things are all, all freebies. And I think there's mm -hmm. like such a, yep. a fear that people have around giving stuff away for free. Like, especially this, mm -hmm. this is something that you've obviously put a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of your own knowledge into creating but could you mm -hmm. could you speak on like the importance of freebies in your business? Like everything is free except for the one thing on this website, which costs less than two dollars a day, which is mm -hmm. awesome. But the freebies, it's, um, they're critical. Um, if you uh, so, there's another guy that we follow who's been a huge influence on our growth in the last probably twelve months. His name's Alex Harmozy. Um, he's incredible. Mm. Look him up if you don't know him. Um, and never worked with him personally, never. Um, but, uh, he says, um, which I couldn't agree more with. He says, if, when you're making something, if you're not looking at it thinking, Oh God, I'm giving too much away for here. Um, if you're not thinking that, then you haven't got it right. You're not giving enough away. And if you really think about the way that the internet works is like, I think as a, I think as entrepreneurs, people, um, and we made this mistake so badly when we started, people come at things from how does this benefit us? Like, you know, the overarching thing of when you're building something or anything that you, a piece of content that you're going to give to, that you're going to give out for free or a product that you're going to sell or anything, it's always comes back to how does this benefit us? How does this give us, you know, what we need? And when you come at it from that point, you really miss the mark, which is the person that's searching the internet, you are just one of hundreds or thousands of other pieces of content or other touch points that they're going to see in one day. How is that going to inspire them to want to take action? And if it's not free and it doesn't solve a problem, like as Sean says, um, you know, with uh, VRA, um, answer specific questions, it's the same kind of thing. You know, if you're not speaking to somebody's core desire and saying, here's something that you can have for free that's going to solve a problem for you that is valuable in and of itself. So it's a, um, you know, if you got this piece of content and that was it, that was all you got, would you get value from it? Or would you be reading it? And then there's the, to know more, click here kind of a thing. Um, and yeah, that's been, it's been critical because it, it, it takes like, I think um, these stats, are, you know, they change all the time, but I remember almost a decade ago, I remember hearing that there was, it took 13 touch points before somebody would take action and give you money uh, in today's day and age. Now I'm hearing that it takes 37 touch points, meaning wow. like, if, like if you watch this piece of content that, and you've never heard of me before, there's one touch point. And then maybe you go to my YouTube channel and you watch a video, there's two touch points. And then maybe a week later, you decide to go and look at another one of my videos. That's three touch points. And then you go to look at my website. That, like, 
that's lit apparently it takes 37 touch points wow. before somebody will go okay let's go so you got to so the freebies are like that's the way to get people into the top of your funnel that's what a funnel is mm. you've got to mm. you've got to you know nurture them down to that point where um because when people say in in today's day and age no as in no i don't want to buy your product it doesn't mean no it means not now and that's yeah. the thing where so many people go wrong um it's not no i don't want your service it's no it's not right for me now you know if they've mm -hmm. looked at what you're doing they're obviously interested in some way and so yeah you have to find a way to make them think that it's worth their while to look further into what you do i mean we've got people that sign up to our app um to our coaching app who say that they've been when i asked them how they found out about us so i've been following you guys for years on youtube and on instagram and you know i just it, i'm ready to do it now you know like years they've been mm, looking at us mm. um and so yeah those um those blueprints are an incredible way to give people value to solve a problem and they really are valuable they are not like we have yeah. really given solutions to problems in there um you know based on decades of being in this industry and knowing how to fix these issues um and in exchange we get an email address and that's really what it is it's a here's something yeah. for you and your cost that you pay is giving up an email address yeah so that's has this been the the main way these freebies have these been the main way you have built that mailing list that you have 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. yeah and the value those, of we, we would have a 2000 email list and the value of having a strong email list for anyone who's thinking that email, like not sure about why they would want a strong email list. Can you speak on that? We've launched programs um, where we've launched them to our email list and to our private Facebook group, which back then I think probably had 2,000 members or something. We're up to 5,000 members now. Um, and we've sold 20,000 Australian dollars in 72 hours um, from a new program. So it's beneficial. Um, so it's huge, huge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huge. It's funny. It's I think I think when a lot of people get started, I, I know that we were like this. People kind of are looking for that silver bullet and like they're looking for like, what's that one thing that when I do this, that's going to be the thing that explodes for me. And I don't know what other people have experienced, but there's, th there hasn't been that for us with anything. There's, there has not been a silver bullet. There's not one thing that there's everything and there's just mm. doing it all and it all yeah. comes together. And that email database is, has been a big part of it. Yeah, for sure. And it, but then you've got to, your... you've got to be active with that as well. You know, so yeah, it yeah. can't just be that you have it. Uh, and so that's what my brother does. He, um, you know, we have different roles in the business and he does all the emails. I, I don't write any emails. Yeah, that sounds nice, not having to write any emails. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to great. film all having the videos though, but yeah, yeah, right. It's a bit of, bit of give and take, hey? Yeah, wow. Yeah. It's so, so how does your YouTube channel then feed into all of this? That's our pillar content. So that's something, a concept that we learned um, from Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, he talks about like um, back when we read Crush It, he was talking about uh, a blog, like a blog is your pillar content. And then you have mm -hmm. all these other things. And the idea is that all your other touch points draw people back. But for us, we made an acknowledgement. We just looked at the, the space of fitness professionals and the way that we use things. And like, if I want to learn how to do something um, that I wanted to search for, I would go to YouTube as a yeah, as yeah. a fitness person. Like I would, if I wanted to learn some new thing, I'd search on YouTube and see what video I could find. So YouTube is our pillar content. Everything mm. that we do um, is all just designed to try to get people to come to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And then that's where we deliver the highest um, level of value. And um, yeah. Yeah. So your YouTube channel in, in your mailing list, when you send out your emails, there's links into your YouTube and it all just kind of feeds into each other. Is that the the plan? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. All our, um, our emails have uh, something that we call a super signature where it has like multiple links at the bottom. 
Um, every email is written around a YouTube video. So I'll do a YouTube video and then my brother will watch it and then he'll write an email on that YouTube video. Um, and then so that if you're reading the email and then it'll say, if you want to know more, click this link and watch this video that Rad made. And um, mm. so it drives people in there and uh, yeah. 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 So you have you have your emails, you have your Facebook group, you have your Instagram, you have your Twitter, you have your YouTube, you have your like that's that's sounds like a lot of a lot of balls to be juggling. You have Shoot. what is your system <laughs> like for her? So is there so there's you and Yanni and then also is it Richard? Richard, yeah. So Richard's uh, one of our business partners as well, yeah. Yeah. yeah so do you a- all manage this together? With obviously the help of um, Chris. Uh, so we about? have, yeah, so Chris does all of our, anything to do with the website. Um, he manages our funnels, anything like ads on Facebook or social media or whatever, like all of that, he does it. So if we come up with a, um, you know, a campaign where we're going to um, offer X, Y, and Z to these people, then Yanni, Chris and me get together and Yanni writes the emails and I do all the videos and then Chris puts it all together and he puts it into active campaign, which is our CRM and, um, you know, Mm. does all the links and all that stuff. So, uh, but then we have um, three full-time videographers that work for us in the Philippines and a full-time graphic artist and a uh, full-time support manager and a full-time content distribution manager whose role is transitional at the moment because the more I do with the YouTube content, the less we need him to do what he used to do, but that's a whole other story. So there's, I, I think there's 10 of us or something like that. Yeah. Um, that do it all. Yeah. So Sounds the, like a, a I, huge operation. Yeah, it's massive. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I have to... Um, the hardest part is just being productive with your time and not sitting there looking at stuff. So I, I come up with concepts for a YouTube video for a long form piece of content, and then and I'm and I'm trying to um, consistently do two or three of those a week. And I'm playing around now with not scripting them because the scripting is the longest bloody part. And I find that when I script them, I don't talk as naturally. I'm kind of like reading this script. So I'm playing around now with just bullet pointing them and then filming them. And then I do, I'm trying to do five uh, shorts from each of the long form pieces of content. So the shorts will be like when I create a long form piece, I always think of five um, bullet points within there that each one of those can be a video. So then I film all of that. Um, and that goes to my video videography team to edit and they send it back and then they edit them specifically for the platform. So, um, there's different ways you edit it for TikTok and for Instagram based on where all the text and everything is on the screen. Um, Mm. and then that comes back and I, um, publish it all. Um, and then my brother uses it to write emails and, uh, stuff like that. And it's a big, big beast of a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. So you, this is your, you're like, it's so much to aspire to. And I think it's so incredible. And it's such a, like your website and your YouTube channel and everything that you're doing on it. For someone who's maybe just starting out in the, in, on their YouTube channel, who's wanting to go down a similar path, what advice would you have for someone who's kind of maybe at the beginning of the fitness niche, any niche really? I think there's similarities and things to be learned about <laughs> about everything Excuse from what me. you're doing. I'm just overcoming a cold. I apologize. Bless you. Um, yeah. On you and your uh, the, uh, <laughs> I think about that um, a lot and it's funny. Um, I've heard uh, – people that I aspire to and they, when they get that advice and um, that is they'll often um, they give like, ah, oh, just do this one thing. And I think there's so, there's just so much to it. The first thing that I'd say is um, be really clear on what it is, who you're serving. Um, so you have to be really, really clear on that. And I've heard people say, 
um, you know, you've got to find the 20% of the market that's yours. And then I've heard other people say, you've got to find the 20% of the 20%. And that's what we do. Mm. So a big part of our success is that we are really, really clear on who we serve. And we, our target audience is people that have been exercising for several years who have a lot more experience in their health and fitness than the average person, but have hit a plateau and cannot break through the plateau. And that then our product, what, what we offer is that we combine strength and flexibility into the exact same workout. So people get strong and flexible at the same rate. And so because we've got that clarity and that focus, um, people will ask, well, people have stopped, but they used to ask us questions about, oh, what do I do about fat loss? Or what do I do about this? And we'd say, look, we don't, we don't do that. That's not what we do. There's other channels that can help you better than that. So that's one of the first things, because if you're not, mm. if you're not really laser focused on what it is that you do, um, you just, you won't be able to do it. And it, and I think it has to be something that you believe in and that you, um, like you don't, you have to, you have to find that blue ocean, of course. Um, and there's, yeah, that, that's, that's a whole nother thing. But the second thing I'd say is read a phenomenal amount. Read, mm -hmm. read, read. Every book on that shelf I've read, some of them three times, some of them 10 times. I listen to audio books. I'll go through periods where I don't listen to anything for months. And that's, I think that's really smart. Um, you have to consolidate. Like sometimes you get to a point where you, you're like trying to make sense of everything that you've just read and listened to and you just have to stop and consolidate. But I have invested so much time into learning how to do things that I had absolutely no idea how to do. And mm -hmm. a lot of it is to do with business. Um, you know, I think one of the, like, if, you, if you're interested, write this down. Read the book Essentialism by, oh, I can't remember his name, but if you Google Essentialism, uh, it's incredible. Uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Um, I don't think it doesn't matter what niche you're in or what industry you're in, you know, go for those ones. Um, extreme ownership has also been really good as well. Um, and then you, you're going, and then you just got to accept that you're going on this journey and you have a goal, like set yourself a goal for whatever it is that you want to achieve. And it should be big. It's like, a, they, they call it a big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, and it's this idea of like, if you shoot for the stars and you only hit the moon, you know, you've, you've done a really good job, but if you shoot for the moon and you don't leave the stratosphere, probably not going to be too happy. So set your goals high, but then detach from it and focus on the process because people that focus on goals lose and people that focus on systems win. So you create your systems and your processes that you do that move the needle forward. And because if you focus on the goals, like if you talk about weight loss, if you focus on that you want to lose 20 kilos or if you're over in the States, 44 pounds of fat and that's your goal and you look at the scales every day when you stand on it, there's nothing you can do to change that number on the scales. You look at that and all you can see is that you haven't lost 20 kilos and it makes you feel miserable. On the other hand, if you focus on systems and processes, so if you don't drink alcohol, if you get eight hours sleep at night, if you go for, uh, if you try and get 10,000 steps every day, if you do a uh, training session at the gym or at home for 30 minutes or 45 minutes, X amount of days a week, they are all things that you can manipulate in real time that will eventually cause you to lose 20 kilos of fat. Absolutely. And so the same mm. thing goes in business. I think people are so fixated on the goal and they forget that it's the processes that get there. Uh, and then just accept that whatever it is that you want to do, it's going to take 10 times more effort than what you think it will. I guarantee <laughs> it. Whatever you think yeah. it's going to take you to get to where you want to go, it's going to take you 10 times more than that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so, so good. I, um, I heard a quote yesterday from you actually, which um, says, search out someone that knows much more than you and do what they say. And I think that's, <laughs> do you remember saying that? Yeah, I do. I do. So, yeah. yeah. I do. I think that, I think that must have been from a little while advice. ago. But, it, yeah. it, it is from a little while ago. But um, yeah, I think it's so amazing what you're doing 
and what you're building and I'm so inspired by it and I'm so, so grateful to you for, for coming and sharing all of all of your some of your story with us today and I, I think it's just it's amazing to me how much no matter what you're doing like those principles are the same and like mm-hmm. w- when you're trying to achieve something and you're trying to build something and work on something like those things are the same like oh, yeah. it's it's across the board with with fitness with building a youtube channel with growing a business like you got to focus on the the systems i love it mm-hmm. thank you so very much for being here today rad i really really appreciate it where can people find you well youtube obviously is the yeah. big one um so if you just go to youtube and search for unity gym um yeah. but everything that we have is just unity gym so if you search unity Amazing. gym anywhere you'll find us um our website is unitygym.com um and yeah the our youtube channel is probably the the best way to go about it awesome beautiful well thank you so much for that and rad's links uh the to the gym and to his youtube channel are in the description of this video and if you are keen to learn more from other people who are on the youtube journey make sure you subscribe to this channel and thank you so very much for being here today we'll catch you next time see you later everyone